what'd you say? <laughs> Lon said he's going to talk about something scary today. So I said, you're not going to scare them, are you? Let's talk about black magic, dear. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, greetings and peace from the Sprouts parking lot. <laughs> Like Richard Scary's busy world here. Busy time. Anyway, uh, that's a children's book. <laughs> My realm of, of reality. Uh, <laughs> last week, Lon was whining about cheese. and um, Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's not that we don't have cheese. We just eat 70% less of it than we did in our youth because that's the way I think what, that's why I think we should do. And thank you, Richard Smothers, for having, sending cheese over to the house. After, after we will eat that eventually. Lawn, especially lawn. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but that's your intention anyway. Uh, <laughs> so we're well, talking. I am going to buy uh, right now. No cheese. I promise. I am not buying any more cheese. We have like four kinds of cheese in the house right we now. We deny cheeses. <laughs> Okay, I'll doubt. I think that's. I think that has something to do with Lon's uh, subject today. I have no idea. Sunday school, yes. Yes. Anyway. Um. Okay. Well, obviously we. Um, obviously we are at the Sprouts uh, parking lot here. Behave yourself, Lon. Huh? Behave yourself. I'll behave myself. <laughs> Don't I always behave myself? Okay, now the, the camera is now, everything is reversed. So what you're seeing is my left side is really my right side. And what's really my left side, well, it's still my left side. Okay. Uh, be that as it may, uh, I want to talk about and I want to share what Crowley has to say, or just a little piece of what Crowley has to say about black magic and the black brothers. The, the reason or the excuse I'm giving for uh, uh, choosing this as my little subject uh, today is uh, kind of in response to an unsolicited uh, message I received, uh, actually posing a very good question, but but uh, posing the question in a, uh, I'm not sure it was uh, uh, meant to not be rude or uh, in in some way uh, spiritually insulting. But that just might be the way I am. I interpreted the attitude of the questioner, but uh, uh, and it did uh, include a question concerning black magic and uh, and black brothers and things like that. And uh, uh, the question was posed from uh, uh, the assumption that the questioner knew a whole lot about black magic. I know what black magic is. I know what white magic is. And uh, da, 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 da. Uh, and uh, forgive me, because uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, denigrate the character of, of uh, this person or th indeed the, the, the motive for them writing. I, I could be uh, totally misinterpreting the uh, the way they posed it. But after this uh, assertion that they knew all about black magic and all about white magic, uh, then they sort of gave the example of animal sacrifice, doing evil for evil purposes, and uh, uh, saying that's Crowley's uh, uh, Crowley encourages that with his black magic and and uh, I'm not going to directly point by point uh, answer that question. It was, uh, I, I think, uh, 
uh, not done in the, the, the spirit of, of uh, uh, genuine uh, curiosity, but just to uh, as a statement of, of self-importance that may in and of itself uh, reveal aspects of what really is black magic. <laughs> if that makes any sense. So what I've chosen to do uh, today is share something, uh, just a piece of something, if I can find it here, of what uh, in chapter or section 12 of uh, Crowley's Magic Without Tears. Uh, the whole chapter is entitled The Left Hand Path, The Black Brothers. And that's another thing, left-hand path. Everybody uh, tosses the term, terms left-hand path, right-hand path. Uh, you know, there, there are very, very uh, uh, legitimate uses of the term left-hand path and right-hand path, uh, especially where it con uh, concerns the, uh, the, the practices and the, the theories uh, of Tantra. Uh, and uh, left, and in that case, left and right hand path doesn't uh, uh, project or cast any moral dispersions, aspersions on uh, uh, on the character of the people that are practicing. It is, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, they're neutral terms uh, that uh, that just uh, designate different. Uh, um, uh, approaches to the to the spiritual practices, and in Crowley's day, I, do, you, do you think there's a big misunderstanding nowadays where all this material uh, is truly available if you just uh, uh, have about 20 minutes at your computer uh, to uh, do a little honest inquiry? Uh, but in Crowley's day, uh, the ignorance of this uh of these subjects <laughs> was was uh abysmal okay anyway i'm just going to read a little bit about what he says uh uh to share with you now as always and you remember he's writing this just uh, uh a year or two maybe uh, before his death uh, so he, he's really old. I'm trying to, um, he's going to talk about the, the levels of consciousness associated with the, the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life. And uh, uh, just, uh, uh, oh, someone is looking at my, <laughs> do you like my bumper sticker? I like your sign, yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, Southern California, <laughs> or the Pleiades, you know. Uh, the bumper sticker says, we ain't from around these parts, and there's a little flying saucer on it. Constance and I had designed it and had it made ourselves, so anyway. Uh, so Crowley's going to be talking about uh, levels of consciousness that that are associated pretty high up the tree of life. He'll mention uh, the holy guardian angel, okay, Adeptus Minor, which is the sixth sephira, right in the middle, the first reflection from number one. But he's going to talk about the uh, grade of Adeptus Exemptus which is the level of consciousness and the level of initiation associated with number four on the tree of life. And it's the job, it's the great work of the Adeptus Exemptus in number four to do what is necessary and be what, who is necessary to cross the abyss to become a master of the temple in number three. And it's that crossing of the abyss 
uh, level that Crowley is going to uh, use as the main crisis, the main duty that uh, separates the sheep from the goats, from the uh, brother from a black brother. Okay. But I'll let Crowley describe it in, a, in response to a letter. Let's see here. In response from a letter from a, a woman disciple, probably uh, either during the last days of World War II or shortly afterwards. Kara Soror. Whatever will be, will be. No. Sorry. Kara Soror, Soror. Okay. I digress. Karis Aurora, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It is an introduction of the word self, and I think this is in, uh, she used the word self or referred to the self uh, in her letter to Crowley that he's responding to. And unfortunately, we don't have the letters he's responding to. We just have the letters he wrote in response. So... Yeah, if a few things like that slip uh, by us, uh, don't feel bad if we're left with a little mystery here and there. It is the introduction of the word self that has raised such prickly questions. It really is a little bewildering. The signpost, right-hand path, left-hand path, seem rather indecipherable. And then, for such a long way, they look exactly alike. At what point do they diverge? Actually, the answer is fairly simple. As far as the achievement or the attainment is concerned, the two paths are, in fact, identical. In fact, one almost feels obliged to postulate some inmost falsity completely impossible to detect inherent at the various, very earliest stages. For the decision which determines the catastrophe confronts only the adeptus exemptus. That's a seven equals four. Uh, Seven levels up the tree of life, four levels down, seven equals four. Until that grade is reached, and that very fully indeed with all the buttons properly sewed on, one is not capable of understanding what is meant by the abyss. Unless, quote, all you have and all you are, unquote, is identical with the universe, its annihilation would leave a surplus. Mark well this first distinction, the, quote, black magician, unquote, or sorcerer, is hardly even a distant cousin of the black brother. The difference between a sneak thief and a Hitler is not too bad of an analogy. The sorcerer may be, indeed he usually is, a thwarted, disappointed man whose aims are perfectly natural. Often enough, his real trouble is ignorance. And by the time he has become fairly hot stuff as a black magician, he has learnt that he's getting nowhere and finds himself, despite himself, on the path of the wise. Invoking Zeus to swell the power of Pan, the prayer discomforts the demented man, lust lies as still as love. He quoted a little poem there. 
Thereupon he casts away his warlock apparatus like a good little boy and finds the AA and lives happily ever after. The left-hand path is a totally different matter. Let's start at the beginning. You remember me saying that only two operations were possible in nature, addition and subtraction. Let us apply this to magical progress. What happens when an aspirant invokes Diana or calls up Lilith? He increases the sum of his experiences in these particular ways. Sometimes he has a liaison experience, which links two main lines of thought, and so is worth uh, dozens of isolated gains. Now, if there's any difference at all between the white and black adept in similar case, it is that the one, the white, working by love under will, achieves a marriage with the new idea while the other, the black adept, merely grabbing, adds a concubine to his harem of slaves. The about-to-be black brother constantly restricts himself. He is satisfied with a very limited ideal. He's afraid of losing his individuality. Reminds one of the Nordic twaddle about race pollution. Have you seen the sand roses of the Sahara? Such is the violence of the Kamsin that it whips grains of sand together, presses them, finally builds them into great blocks, big enough and solid enough to be used for walls in the oasis. And beautiful, whew, for all that they are not real rocks. Leave them in peace with no possible interference. What, what happens? I brought some home and put them in, a, in a safety as curiosities and as useful psychometrical tests. Alas, time is enough. Go to the drawer which held them. Nothing remains but little piles of dust. Quote, now, master, what reproach in the tone of your voice? All right, all right, keep your hair on. I know that this is the precise term used in the vision and the voice to describe the great white brother or the babe of the abyss. But to him it means victory. To the left-hander, it would mean defeat, ruin, devastation, irremediable, final. It is exactly that which he most dreads. And it is that to which he must, in the end, come. Because there is no compensating element in his idea of structure. Nations themselves never grow permanently by smash-and-grab methods. One merely acquires a sore spot, as in the case of Lorraine, or, well, or, or Erie, or Ireland. Okay. And he gives some uh, examples here. I'm going to... Uh, although Erie, using that... Uh, just the formula of uh, restriction, shutting itself up in her misery, poverty, and idiot pride, when a real marriage with and disillusion in a real life country would give her new life. Now, get this, Crowley writing in 1940-something. The melting pot idea is the great strength of America. Consider the Faubourg Saint-Germain arist uh, aristocracy. Now, hardly even a sentimental memory. The guillotine did not kill them. It was their own refusal to adapt themselves to the new biological conditions of political life. 
It was indeed their restriction that rotted them in the first instance. Had Lafayette or Mirabeau been entrusted with full power, supplied with adequate material, a younger generation of virtue, the monarchy might still be ruling France. But then you ask, now he's back to the magic talk here, but then you ask, how can a man go so far wrong after he has after he has, as an Adeptus Minor, that's 5 equals 6, that's the Holy Guardian Angel, uh, as an Adeptus Minor, attained the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. Recall the passage in the 14th Aether. See where thine angel hath led thee. And so on. Perhaps a black brother deserts his angel when he realizes the program. Perhaps his heir was so deeply rooted from the very beginning that it was his evil genius that he evoked. In such cases, the man's policy is, of course, to break off all relations with the supernal triad and to replace it by inventing a false crown, Da'ath. Now, Da'ath is that, it's often called a false sephira. It's in the middle of the abyss. To them, knowledge will be everything. That's the title of Da'ath. Knowledge is everything. And what is knowledge but the very soul of illusion? Refusing thus the true nourishment of all his faculties, they lose their structural unity and must be fortified by continuous doses of dope in anguish self-preservation. Thus, all its chemical equations become endothermic. I do hope I'm making myself clear. It is a dreadfully subtle line of thought. But I think you ought to be able to pick up the essential theorem, your own meditations, aided by the relevant passages in Libra 418, Vision and the Voice, and elsewhere. That should do the rest. Now he goes on continually in in uh, awesome digressions but for that particular part of the subject that's it for today i hope you got a kick out of that and uh, uh, if you don't have in your library a hard copy of uh, magic without tears which is pretty rare uh, you can you can f uh, find it on kindle as a matter of fact that's where i read from uh, uh, today. Anyway, that's it for today. It's a beautiful day here in uh, uh, Sacramento, and friends are driving up from uh, Southern California to uh, pay us a little visit and maybe take us out to lunch where uh, Constance will be with me, and uh, that means there will be no cheese. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.